Well, you know, I've heard people say for years that it doesn't really matter what we believe about the end times, that good and godly people hold to different views of the end, and it's just an area where we have to accept that different views are okay, and one day we'll know. But right now, what difference does it make? Well, technically, there is some truth to that view. I have very good friends that are deeply devoted followers of Jesus who hold to different interpretations of the end times than I do. I don't question their sincerity or their devotion to Jesus Christ. But I do believe that our interpretation definitely affects the way we live out our lives, and it affects the way we interpret the rest of the scriptures. So the pursuit of my life has been to know God, to know his word, and to be in pursuit of the truth. Now, throughout this series on the parables of Jesus, I've stated that these parables and teachings of Jesus are primarily focused on the subject of the kingdom, his kingdom, the messianic kingdom. They're apocalyptic, and yes, they are eschatological. Many of his parables and much of his teaching dealt specifically with the kingdom being removed from the apostate first century imposters. He was bringing the long-promised and anticipated salvation to the righteous remnant of Israel. And simultaneously, he was bringing judgment and destruction to the apostates who had taken over the leadership of first century Judaism. Now, you can't honestly read through the Gospels and not see this. So when Jesus and the New Testament writers speak of the, quote, end of the age, they aren't talking about the end of the world or the end of the planet. They were talking about the end of the old covenant age that was soon to take place, and it was going to take place in the destruction of their holy city, in the destruction of their precious temple, which, frankly, they actually loved more than they loved God, and the destruction of their corrupt priesthood, the destruction of their Judaistic system that had been hijacked by the Pharisaical system and rules and regulations and loopholes used to justify their own corruption, but also used to hold the people in bondage, and very significantly, the destruction of their genealogical records that they placed so much trust in. Now, let's get back to the final few verses in Jesus' explanation of the parable of the wheat and the tares. We begin at Matthew chapter 13, verse 38, where he says, The field is the world, and as for the good seed, these are the sons of the kingdom, and the tares are the sons of the evil one. And the enemy who sowed them is the devil, and the harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. So just as the tares are gathered up and burned with fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send forth his angels, or messengers, and they will gather out of his kingdom all stumbling blocks and those who commit lawlessness and will throw them into the furnace of fire. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears let him hear. So what we have here, according to Jesus, is the gathering up of the tares to be burned. It happens at the time of the harvest, which is, according to Jesus, the end of the age. Now again, it does not say the end of the world. It is the end of the age. And the word translated age from the Greek is the word Aeon, A-I-O-N. The Jews were very aware that the Old Testament prophesied of a coming Messiah, and there was great anticipation that it was time for their Messiah to come, and they were looking and expecting and anticipating him at the time that Jesus actually came. The problem was that their definition of Messiah and God's definition of Messiah were very different but they viewed the world in the terms of two ages. The present age, the age they were living in, 
the age of the Mosaic Covenant, and then the age to come, the age of the Messianic Kingdom. Now, Jesus is using that language to communicate that the end had come because he was their promised Messiah and he was in their midst. And as he launched his ministry, he kept saying things like this to him. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of God has come upon you. You are not far from the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God has come near to you. Our Father has chosen gladly to give you the kingdom. The kingdom of God is in your midst. The kingdom of God is within you. My kingdom is not of this world. Now, in order for his kingdom to come about, their age had to come to an end. The present age, the age of the Mosaic Covenant, came first and then came the Messianic Kingdom. Jesus told them at numerous times and in many different teachings and parables that the end of their age was going to happen in their lifetimes and it was actually going to be at the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD. Their, their city was going to be destroyed, their temple was going to be destroyed, and their system was going to be destroyed, and in 70 AD it was. Now when Jesus said in verses 41 and 42, that the Son of Man will send forth his angels, or messengers, and they will gather out of his kingdom all stumbling blocks and those who commit lawlessness and will throw them into the furnace of fire. In that place there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. He is talking about the coming destruction of Jerusalem and the destruction of their temple. Now, throughout the Old Testament, this coming day of judgment, their end was prophesied in numerous places. And Jesus picks up on the exact same apocalyptic language to describe the very same event. And over the next few weeks, we're going to look at some of the, these Old Testament prophecies of the coming end of their age. Now, he tells another parable that deals with this very same subject. It, it's, it's called the parable of the landowner. And it's found in Matthew chapter 21, verses 33 to 46. And we don't have time to, we're not going to look at the whole parable today. But I, I, I do want to, and we will look at it in detail next week. But I do want to take a minute and look and draw your attention to the final few verses of the passage. Because he's talking to these Jewish apostate leaders, the chief priests and the elders of the people. And at the end of the parable of the landowner, he makes the following statement to them. Matthew chapter 21, we're going to pick it up at verse 43. Therefore, I say to you, these people he's talking to, these apostate chief priests and elders of the people, the Jewish leadership, therefore, I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people producing the fruit of it. Now, folks, that can't be interpreted any other way. He's not talking about some future event 2,000 years into the future or 3,000 or 10,000. He's talking to a specific group of people at a specific time in history about a specific moment that they were going to experience. And in verse 44, he says, And he who falls on this stone, being him, will be broken to pieces. But on whomever it falls, it will scatter him like dust. And when the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they understood that he was speaking about them. The kingdom was going to be taken from them. They thought they were the rightful heirs, the chosen people of God, but they had become apostate. And just as God issued a certificate of divorce for the northern kingdom of Israel because of her idolatry, he was now about to do the same thing and divorce the harlot wife of apostate 
Judah, and they knew exactly what Jesus was talking about and exactly who he was talking about, and it enraged them even further. Well, I want to invite you to continue studying with me as we peel back the layers of the onion regarding the kingdom and the presence of Messiah. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you'll be with me again right here tomorrow morning as we continue our study of the parable of the wheat and the tares and we look further into what Jesus had to say about the kingdom. Why not click on the subscribe button on the lower right corner of your screen and you'll be notified in YouTube whenever a new video gets posted. And if you're watching on Facebook, consider sharing this on your wall and invite your friends to watch it. Hey, go out and make today a great day. God bless you. I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow morning.